Welcome to a screencast on solubility equilibria. The objectives of this screencast are to write chemical equations and equilibrium constant expressions to represent solubility equilibria and to perform calculations involving solubility equilibria. To start, let's consider the reaction between lead to nitrate, an aqueous solution of that, which is clear and colorless, and potassium iodide, an aqueous solution of that, is also clear and colorless. And if we mix these together, and you might have seen this reaction uh, in the past, a yellow solid is formed, and that yellow solid indicates we have a precipitation reaction. The precipitate, the yellow solid, is lead to iodide, and then potassium nitrate uh, is the other product of this reaction. The lead iodide, lead to iodide, is a solid. Potassium nitrate is an aqueous uh, solution. And we've seen before that ionic compounds are typically classified as either soluble in water or insoluble in water. And we have solubility rules that describe or predict which combinations of ions make soluble compounds and which ones make insoluble compounds. In this case, the lead to um, iodide is uh, the insoluble compound. It's an exception to the normal rule of halides uh, being soluble, but with lead to plus, uh, uh, lead iodide is not soluble. And in the past, we've looked at, the, at ionic compounds as being one or the other, soluble or insoluble. But if we look more closely, it turns out that not all of the lead ions and um, iodide ions from our reactants, not all of them stick together making a solid. In other words, not all of the lead to iodide actually is in the precipitate or solid form. A little bit of it is in aqueous form. So we actually have an equilibrium and in fact, in general, ionic compounds are not simply soluble or insoluble, but they have degrees of solubility, and those can be quantified. Now, if we look at, just suppose we had some lead to iodide, um, here is what it would look like if all of it had precipitated, but it doesn't all precipitate. A little bit of it is actually uh, dissolved as ions, and we'll next look at how to describe and how to quantify that. So the equilibrium between a solid and its ions, in this case between lead iodide and the lead 2 plus and I minus ions, uh, we typically write with the solid on the left and the ions on the right. This is our convention. So PbI2 solid dissociates into Pb2 plus and 2I minus. It only dissociates a little bit. And for this equilibrium reaction equation, the equilibrium constant expression is the usual thing. Products on the top, reactants on the bottom. But since the reactant is a solid, that's not included in the equilibrium constant expression. So the equilibrium constant is K equals the PV2 plus concentration times the I minus concentration squared. And that turns out to equal 1.48, sorry, 1.4 times 10 to the minus eighth if we're at 25 degrees uh, Celsius. This kind of equilibrium constant is called a K sub SP. And KSP, the SP stands for solubility product constant. So this is a product of the solubilities uh, or the solubility of that particular substance. And this is how we generally deal with solubility equilibrium. KSPs are numbers that are found in tables. So here are a few KSP values um, going to decreasing or smaller equilibrium constants. So Copper chloride, CuCl, has a KSP of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6th. And going down the column here, we uh, get to iron 3 hydroxide, which has a KSP of 4 times 10 to the minus 38th. 
So increasingly small numbers or decreasing the size of equilibrium constants in this particular table. Now, how do we do calculations with uh, equilibrium constants for solubility? How do we determine K sub SP values? So first problem here, determine the value of KSP for silver bromide at 25 degrees Celsius, and the solubility of silver bromide is 7.1 times 10 to the minus seventh molar. Well, the typical way we write our equilibrium reaction equation is the solid on the left, AgBr, and then when it dissociates, it dissociates into an Ag plus ion and a Br minus ion. Then we can do the usual ice table, and our initial, the solid, we're going to presume we have some, but its actual amount doesn't matter, so long as we don't run out, of course. And initially, we're going to assume or our starting point is that none of the silver bromide has actually dissociated, none of it has dissolved. So zero and zero for the initial concentrations of the ions. But it's going to dissolve somewhat, so again the solid, uh, that amount will go down a little bit, but so long as we don't run out it doesn't matter. But the ions will go up, so plus x and plus x, and at equilibrium, we'll have some amount of the silver bromide left, and again, its concentration stays constant, so that is not part of our equilibrium constant expression. And then the silver ion and the bromide ion each have the same concentration at equilibrium. But we know that the solubility of silver bromide is 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar, and so if that number of moles per liter of silver bromide dissociate or dissolve, then we get 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th mole per liter of silver ion and 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th mole per liter of the bromide ion. So if we then plug that into our equilibrium constant expression, K sub SP equals Ag plus concentration times Br minus concentration, that's 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th times 7.1 times 10 to the minus 7th, and that works out to be 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. So we would say at 25 degrees Celsius, the solubility product constant for silver bromide is 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. Now, of course, we can do the essentially opposite of this. We can know a KSP value, so we can look in a table for, for example, the K sub SP for silver chromate, and that's a known value, and we can use that then to determine the solubility of silver chromate at that temperature, typically 25 degrees Celsius. So in this case, the equilibrium reaction is the solids on the left, Ag2CrO4 is silver chromate, it dissociates into two silver ions and one chromate ion. We do our ice table just as before. Initially it hasn't dissociated. Now the change is it dissociates and notice that there's two silver ions for every one chromate ion and for every one silver chromate um, unit. And so at equilibrium we have 2x for the concentration of silver ion, x for the concentration of chromate ion, and our equilibrium constant expression is K sub SP equals Ag plus squared times CRO4 2 minus, and that is equal to 2x, the silver ion concentration, which gets squared, times x, the chromate ion concentration, and that product is equal to the known or looked up K sub SP value for silver chromate 9 times 10 to the minus 12th. So we have an equation to solve and if we solve this we end up with X equal and X in this case will be again the solubility of silver chromate and that works out to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4th mole per liter uh, for the solubility of silver chromate at 25 degrees Celsius. Now if we consider this equilibrium a little bit further, silver chromate 
uh, solid in equilibrium with its uh, constituent ions, is there a way that we could change this system and make maybe more precipitate or less precipitate? And hopefully you'd say, oh, if we have an equilibrium, then what we can do to this equilibrium is increase the concentration of uh, one of these substances, like let's say silver ion or the chromate ion. We could of course try to decrease the concentration of those ions. Uh, and if we do that, like if we increase the concentration of silver ion or the concentration of chromate ion, we've increased the concentration of one of our products and we would expect the reaction as a response would then go to the left forming more of the solid, more of the precipitate, and using up some of the silver ion and chromate ion. Now, this is an example of what's known as the common ion effect. The way this is often stated is the solubility of a slightly soluble ionic compound is decreased by the presence of a common ion in the solution. So if we added some silver ion, or some chromate ion, an ion that's in common with the silver chromate, then we end up driving the reaction, in this case to the left, and decreasing the solubility, making more precipitate, making the substance less soluble. But what did we just use? We just used Le Chatelier's principle. So the common ion effect is really nothing more than a specific example of the good old Le Chatelier's principle. So finally, let's do one calculation with this to determine the solubility of silver chromate in 0.1 molar silver nitrate solution. So now we have a common ion, we have some silver ion, which we predict is going to decrease the solubility of the silver chromate, and let's see if that's true and how much it is uh, decreased uh, in terms of solubility. So pretty much the same as we did in the previous problem. We have our silver chromate on the left as a solid, the ions on the right. We do our ice table, and the difference is that this time our initial silver ion concentration is 0.1 molar due to the silver ion from the silver nitrate. Now there's also nitrate ion around, that's a spectator ion, so that we're just going to ignore. And the chromate ion initial concentration is zero, Change is increase of plus 2x uh, for the silver ion and increase of x for the chromate ion. So at equilibrium, we have 0 0.100 plus 2x for the silver ion concentration and x for the chromate ion concentration. We do so our case of SP expression, silver ion squared times chromate ion equals 0 0.1 plus 2x squared times x, and that equals the same uh, case of SP value of 9.0 times 10 to the minus 12th for silver chromate. And we need to solve that equation. And just as a note, we're going to expect that X is pretty small. So by comparison to 0 0.100, we'd expect that this X here could be pretty much neglected. It's very small. So we have approximately 0 0.100 squared times X equals 9 times 10 to the minus 12th. If we solve it explicitly or using that approximation, we end up with x, which is the solubility, equals 9.0 times 10 to the minus 10th molar. And note that is way less than the 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4th molar, which was the solubility of silver chromate just in water. So we have a factor of 10 to the 6th or so uh, decrease in solubility due to this common ion. And that is it for the Solubility Equilibria screencast.